The first day of school does not come without, of course, some cause for concern, especially with COVID-19 cases surging. And that's why we're bringing in State Superintendent Chris Rakedahl to answer some of your biggest questions this morning. Superintendent Rakedahl, good morning to you. There are some concerns, of course, as kids head back to class five days a week for the first time in a year and a half, that they might have fallen behind during the pandemic. Listen to this. One thing that we found, especially with some of our uh, scholars who we work with who had good grades, uh, we found maybe 80% of them uh, grades went down. So what is your response this morning to parents who are worried that their children may not be prepared for this year, given the fact that they were, you know, doing remote learning for the last year? What steps are being taken to address this learning gap? Yeah, good morning to both of you. <clears throat> um, I would say your students are ready. Uh, they're excited, and I know there's a lot of nervousness as well, but uh, we've been looking at assessment data all over the country. We've looked at some data in our state. Uh, obviously, we have a pacing system. We, 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 we have expectations where students will be, but they're all moving at different paces. And while uh, you know this might have set some students back a few months in English language arts, maybe even a few months in math, we're all experiencing it the same way. Educators have evaluation tools at the beginning of the school year. The first thing they will all do is get a baseline of where students are and then begin the work of really building momentum again. So uh, they're ready. They're ready and uh, they need to be excited about that. And I think they are. Yeah, yeah. The governor uh, superintendent has put the vaccine mandate into place for all educators in Washington state. Do you expect to lose some teachers or educators because of this vaccine mandate? You know, I think it's possible. Um, this is a, just a remarkable uh, public health crisis that we faced. And so this is a pretty extraordinary measure and we recognize that. Uh, but we've known how serious these kind of infections are, which is why the healthcare industries had these requirements for a long time. It's why there are more than half a dozen uh, vaccines required of students just to go to school. And we have really high compliance in this state. Uh, so I expect most educators, almost all of them will step up and get vaccinated. Some will qualify for exemptions and there may be some who, who say they don't wanna do any of those things. And that's certainly their right, but I don't expect a, a big exodus at all, but I do think in some communities there could be a little bit of pressure uh, and it may not just be you know educators, it might actually be other groups of folks like bus drivers and others. And I was just looking at the uh, data, the latest data that you have on your website showing COVID outbreaks in schools in this last year in our state. And it really involved a pretty small number of cases in schools uh, and the transmission at schools seems to be pretty rare. However, with the Delta variant now a huge factor, which wasn't the case necessarily yeah. earlier this year, how confident are you that the safety protocols in place right now today are enough to keep students safe? Yeah, thank you, Mimi. It is without question and certainly not without controversy true that the state of Washington has the safest protocols in the United States of America. Uh, we do have a masking mandate for all staff, all personnel, all students. It's unusual in the states to have that a statewide. We're the only state with a vaccine requirement for all school personnel and contractors. Um, and we don't have a test out option. You can't do a weekly test because those lag. And in states that have that, there's a little bit more risk. So we have the safest protocols. We also have $2.5 billion that have been sent to schools for safety uh, mitigation. They all know how to contact trace. We will have cases. What I keep trying to say to folks is don't be surprised when there are outbreaks. Mm. And remember an outbreak is two or more students uh, or two or more people in a school. So they get uh, often blown up as very large things. And most of the time they're quite small, but we'll quarantine as necessary. We will contact trace immediately. More than 200 districts have a testing regime uh, immediately as well. So don't be surprised that there are cases. There are going to be some, but we really have to push through this. A lot of students are going to be bringing a potential infection into school because they have not been wearing masks for, for, for all day during their summer break. And now we're all starting school together, but the yeah. protocols are really good and we need to push through those. But the mm -hmm. DOH guidance doesn't actually have anything that says that kids need to be in cohorts or pods this year uh, as, as guidance, right? Schools might be doing that, but they're not required to do that. So are you concerned at all that, you know, when kids do bring, and it's not an if, but when, when. bring infections into the school that you're, it will then multiply and you're not gonna be able to figure out, well, which classrooms do you shut down? Do you shut down the whole school? What, what happens mm -hmm. uh, if that were to happen? Yeah, most districts are figuring out cohorting. And even if it's not really small cohorts, they're making sure they're staggering lunches. They're making sure they're not sharing common equipment or spaces. They're moving each classroom very differently. 
certainly more risk in middle and high school as students are definitely moving about classes. Maybe it's every five periods or six periods or seven periods they're on movement. So uh, that's also a group of folks though increasing the vaccination rates uh, quite rapidly. So there will be some infections, but we also have great contact tracing and relationships with local public health. If it is required, a local public health official may have to quarantine larger groups of students or maybe even shut down a building temporarily, in which case districts will pivot in that facility only uh, to a temporary remote model. And then it, when it's safe, return back. And Chris, you're a dad. Do you feel safe with your kids going to school right now? I really do. Um, but I also know that uh, it's a time of nervousness and anxiety, and um, I expect there to be cases in our school, and I expect uh, students will have to be quarantined. Uh, if everyone wears their mask and we get vaccinated and we follow our protocols and we don't send our kids to school when they're feeling ill or they have a fever, mm. um, this is incredibly manageable. And as we've now learned, we have to learn to deal with COVID with the highest protocols uh, in the country, but we still have to learn to deal with it. And it's going to be with us uh, yeah. for quite a long time. And, and now that's what we're preparing for. Sad reality for sure. Superintendent Chris Rakedahl, thank you so much for your time this morning. We appreciate your, your insight and input as we begin this new school year. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good to have him live this morning. So many questions from a lot of you parents. Keep them coming. Text us. We'll get those answered as quickly as we can.